Hello and welcome back to the Join Dota League Season Number 5, American Division 2.2. This is going to be Game 2 of a two-game series between Next Level Badasses and Quetzal. I'm Grandis Fiend. Once again, I'll be joined by Mike Loris. Man, that was some Game 1. I don't know if it was Quetzal punting the game or if it was uh, bound to happen at a certain point, but Quetzal, they had such a huge edge at one point. It was... Was it actually 20k? I don't remember exactly how much peak edge they had, but it was a lot of gold advantage and a lot of experience, but next level badasses win anyway, stopping Quetzal's winning streak in JDL. So we'll see if they could 2-0, but this is JDL. The safe money is always going to be on a tie. Yeah, I think that's pretty fair. And after game number one, I would not be... Ex um... Excuse me. I completely lost my mind for a second there, but I would not be surprised if we saw a 1-1. Team Quetzal definitely showing that they could have won that game, but just not getting that little bit of extra push that they needed to actually seal the deal. Hey, got to make sure, sure you have your buybacks. Got to make sure you don't waste your ultimates and don't get picked apart. Uh, I think it was that dieback on the Brewmaster that really did them in in the end. Uh, Quetzal up till then had a, a decent fighting chance, and by fighting chance, I mean advantage in the game, but... Uh, one little mistake. It's not, of course, all up to the brewmaster. He played fantastically, and so well, no one's perfect. But uh, that was really when it was just all over. But that being said, we're looking at a fresh draft. Although it looks like the bands and picks, or at least the bands, are going to be much like the last game, progressing very slowly, and should be relatively similar. Actually, no, Vengeful Spirit can hit the bin. Yeah, I suppose it's fair enough. She has been seeing a lot of first pick play and. Uh, well, showing that Team Quetzal don't want to first pick up the Venge, and since they don't want to first pick it, they don't want next level badasses to get their hands on it either. I think that's reasonable enough. We'll see if next level badasses want to ban out a troll or a juggernaut here. Um, I think you know juggernaut is probably one of the more scary heroes to deal with, but uh, of course the troll just was played very well, so it's of course going to be a respect, a little more respect than just sheer power level. But uh, Lion is the first pick. And it is actually very similar to what we saw last game. Support first pick, and we'll see what next level badasses have to respond to this. If they want to go for a Juggernaut, then you can't really fault them for it. No, definitely not. But it isn't without answers. Lion is generally just really good, especially if you can get a Blink Dagger. Blink Hex Initiation is wonderful to have at your disposal, and you can't really say no to more CC and burst damage. I think he's just all around a really good pick, and... Well, since the Venge was banned out in the first stage, he'll eke through to Team Quetzal's lineup. Yeah, and probably just the two of them. The strongest support heroes that you could first pick or pick up very early because they are typically very consistent and their ceiling of power is so high, their floor of power is also incredibly high as well. So you know, it's a relatively easy first pick for Team Quetzal and it leaves them open to anything moving forward. Next level badasses, having seen a lion on the other end pretty sure they'll be comfortable once again just going for a sniper uh, it's not really a terrible hero to go up against lion it could be worse could be better but uh sniper worked out pretty decently for next level badasses and they won so i'm sure they're thinking about going for that again maybe they shy away from it since they don't have the venge to back it up which really did help them quite a bit with defensive swaps yeah that is true uh you could try to keep your sniper alive through other means like healers or whatnot but swap is definitely the easiest way to keep your sniper alive so whatever it is going to be it's going to take a while witch doctor that was the exact same second pick i guess as last game but uh we'll see what it's going to be partnered up with this draft is so glacially slow compared to some others yeah, and especially for the heroes that we're getting. It's not like this is Groundbreak or anything. Lion and Witch Doctor are very staple in the meta, as are all of the bands. All right, so Witch Doctor has some potential combo potential as well. I mean, the Death Ward we saw in the last game didn't really have a huge amount of impact, but uh, it's not really going to be comboing hugely with the Clockwork either. Cogs into Death Ward is reasonable for the early mid-game. The late game, it's generally not going to be that great, but Clockwork, just as a pick, is what you want. You want to be starting these fights, and if you can have any heroes to follow up, then you're going to be golden. Yeah, look no further than Hookshot. They have plenty of uh, time to remedy that, and even just by himself, if Clockwork oh, can okay. isolate a single oh, support, okay. especially if he has a blade mail, there's really not much you can do about it. All right, so now Clockwork's on the other side. Quetzal 
are going to be inherently more on the defensive. They have to get their map vision up and make sure that they try to protect themselves against this clockwork. Through a disruptor, that's, uh, first of all, an interesting support pick. Uh, usually for a disruptor, it's a hero that you want to pick up in response to something other than just proactively, but uh, it is a reasonable counter to clockwork, although it's not completely going to shut him down. We'll see Viper as well as Juggernaut banned out in the next stage by both teams. Pretty strong heroes, but nothing super specific. We're going to see the Sniper banned out by Quetzal, and I think that's also fair enough. You don't want to give the Sniper to the team with the Clockwork. Yeah, so that's just a little bit too much, especially since they just played it. And all well, that and Viper are going to hit the bin. Quetzal showing a little bit of respect, and it is actually going to be them opening with two supports. So, you know, the support's getting a lot of love maybe going to result in some more interesting cores, but uh, I mean, this is just respect bans all around. Quetzal just did pretty well with the Zeus. Next level badass is just one with the Viper Sniper. So, okay, from where do they go? They still can maybe grab some Witch Doctor, Death Ward, Ultimate combos, but it's probably not going to be huge in their list of priorities. The combo I was going to say before was just grab a Tide Hunter and have a Tide Ravage Death Ward combo. Yeah, and it wouldn't be terrible right now, but uh, I think that maybe picking up something to come with the clockwork further would be a little bit nicer. Maybe something like a Skyrath Mage. Yeah, Skyrath Mage would be really good with that clockwork, and adding a little bit of damage to the kind of damaged light uh, opening right now would be pretty good. So we'll see if they grab that one up, although I'm pretty sure they could just sit on their support pick and use this pick they have right now to grab a core hero, or you know, a secondary core hero. As far as countering Disruptor Lion or what Disruptor Lion counter, uh, just don't pick up a huge mobility hero. Probably no Ember, no Weaver, no Morphling. Those types of heroes should be off the table, but and you could always get core heroes that aren't those heroes. Yeah, definitely. So we'll have to see what they settle on. Both of these drafts have been very top-heavy. Next level badasses. Down to about 10 seconds of their time, and it's going to be a Bristleback. He's definitely not one of those super mobile heroes, but... <laughs> Definitely doesn't like getting hexed up in silence and just more than anything kited around side the fights. Doesn't combo the best with the clockwork, but it's still a decent pick. It's two very tanky heroes from the next level badasses. Bristleback is just a nuisance to kill and well Disruptor doesn't really have that much kill potential towards the Bristle. Lion has ways of just firing and forgetting about the Bristle, but aside from that, Quetzal, they are kind of low on their damage output right now. Uh, maybe this is going to be a game where they just turtle up and try to get it to go late, grab, you know, maybe a, a mobility hero of their own, Storm Spirit or something like that. But uh, for Quetzal, their options are wide open after having a pretty firm base of supports off of which to build. And well, Bristleback Clockwork don't really have any demanding counters. It's not like, you know, they have a very simple, oh, I go for an Anti-Mage here or something like that. I feel like I mention it a lot, but a hero I'd really like to see for Quetzal, maybe not in this third pick, but later on, is a Timbersaw. It feels like we just haven't seen that hero enough up against these tanky strength front lines. Yeah, I mean, it does do so much damage. Of course, once your Timber Chain gets interrupted once, then the entire flow of the fight is pretty much skewed, and you're in quite a bit of trouble. I think in this particular game, it will be a really good pick for Quetzal if they want to grab that. Razor, though, is going to be the pick. Uh, Razor is... First of all, the raises I've seen lately have been absolutely terrible. Like, they've been utterly failing, so I don't like that. But Razor up against the two melee heroes of Bristleback and Clockwork Storm is Spirit. going to generally be pretty safe. And next level badasses actually do pick up that Storm Spirit. Mm, pretty risky when you're dealing with the Hex coming up from Line and the Static Storm coming up from the Disruptor. Can be very annoying. And also Razor, pretty hard to solo kill as a Storm Spirit, just with the passive. Very annoying for him to deal with. His combo relies very heavily on him being able to right-click. I don't think that Storm is really a necessity here. I think it's more that next level badasses want to play Storm and are comfortable with it. Yeah, I think that's probably a safer assumption because if you're going to use Disruptor, if you're going to pick Disruptor as a counter to Clockwork, being able to just glimpse them back or a Static Storm around top of them, then you could do the exact same thing to the Storm Spirit. In that case, why pick up a Storm Spirit? But uh, now they have Supreme Initiation. They have two heroes that could jump in very easily. Hell, even the Bristleback, he can't blink in, and he most likely will never be able to blink in. But he is pretty fast with that Warpath. He'll be able to charge right in, follow up the Storm Spirit and Clockwork, and next level Badass will be able to engage very quickly. Fortunately for Quetzal, now with the Centaur Warrunner pickup, they'll be able to disengage very quickly. But the odds of you outrunning a Storm Spirit and Clockwork, very slim. 
Yeah, definitely so. It's a, still a pretty nice pick for Team Quetzal, the Centaur Warner, and I'm okay with it, but um, yeah, let's see what their fifth is going to be to tie this all together. Lycan is going to be the ban coming out from NLBA. Yeah, Quetzal's still looking for a little bit more damage. Centaur, though he does have a lot of bursts, his sustained damage output isn't that high, and Razor up against Storm Spirit is not going to have a chance to steal any damage there, or it'd be very unlikely that he will. And uh, Clockwork Bristleback stealing their damage isn't really a huge priority, so Quetzal looking for a little bit more of a direct damaging route, and it's most likely just going to be a defensive tri lane, I want to say, for Quetzal, going up against just the Clockwork, so you could go for pretty much anything now. I'm kind of liking the Anti-Mage versus the Storm Spirit. You ball lightning in, use up all your mana, instantly met with the Mana Void, pop, easy kill. Yeah, and I don't think next level badasses could punish it that heavily inside the laning phase, especially if it's just a clockwork. Even though, in theory, clockwork does pretty well against melee heroes, not when you don't have any mana to work with. It really depends on who drains who with the cogs or with the mana break. All right, so we'll see what Quetzal want to ban out here. Next level badass is still looking for that secondary support. And as far as what they need right now, I mean, this time they have a lot more crowd control. They have Storm Sphere Pool, they have Witch Doctor, they have Clockwork. And they don't exactly need a lot of crowd control to begin with. So they don't exactly need a whole bunch of stuns. It's going to be a Void ban. And then a Necrophos pick from Next Level Badasses. So supports. How is this going to work? I would like to see support Clockwork just because I absolutely despise support Necrophos. I don't think it actually does very much for your team. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a better way to lane it. How do you think they go about this? That seems like the most viable. I'm just thinking, who could you actually jungle with on the next level of badasses? Because that's another way Storm. to get around. You can jungle with Storm. You can you can jungle with everyone. Let's just put that out there. But Storm is like the most viable jungler. But even then, it's not that viable. And with the clinks, you definitely don't want to be oh. jungling. So Quetzal, they're now packing some serious heat. Uh, I don't really know if this is the best pick for Quetzal. Again, I think Antimage, especially up against the Necrophos pick, might be a little bit better, but Man, Quetzal, they are prepared to go pretty aggressive fairly early on. Yeah, and Clinks is one of those heroes that just oozes damage, and a natural Orchid carry up against Storm is going to be even more disabled that he has to deal with. I don't know, it'll be interesting to see how they play around it. Clinks is not one of the heroes that's currently in vogue. Yeah, it is a hero that sometimes does very well, and if you are able to get a little bit of free farm early, then you're going to be golden moving forward. He mostly wins his lanes maybe not as guaranteed as like a viper or something like that but searing hour harassment is a pain in the ass and it does stack up very quickly so we'll see if this clinks can get off the ground but either way we are in the game no pauses and let's see who's gonna be playing what for next level badasses they're gonna send dbg up towards top as the bristleback once again we got mccoy's racist grandpa on the witch doctor yurgity playing the clockwork with noble wings on the storm spirit at least disembody on the necrophos and on the dire side of the map, we're going to have Quetzal with Raykill taking up to Clinks, supported by Disruptor, played by Mist. Forever going to be playing on the Lion mid lane. Going to be Greed on the Razor and off lane. We're going to have Moon playing on the center Warner. I think that Quetzal have swapped out a player. Uh, forever, right? Yes. I. We were just casting them, and I should know all of their names right now. But short term memory is hard, and I don't do short term memory. So I'm not even going to try to say who we replaced. But we have four heroes down on next level, uh, down this bottom lane for next level badasses. Uh, the Clockwork and the Necrophos are both kind of itemized for a core role. But this Clockwork, he's playing in such a way that would indicate that he's going for a support role. And they're actually going to catch Moon in the corner. He has returned level one. That's not going to help him at all right now because here comes the cast. Battery Assault going to close in as well. Moon is going to be your first blood. Who's going to draw it? It's going to be Yurgity. Uh, I don't really know why he decided to go down those steps after seeing the clockwork come around. That didn't seem like a good idea. Yeah, especially with return level one. Maybe Hoof Stomp, he can buy a little bit more space, but yeah, just a really awkward first blood. He gets a bounty rune at the very least for him, and he'll be able to buy a TP if he needs to get anywhere very quickly. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty clean first blood for next level badasses. And Centaur, with return level 1, can't really do too much. Urgity is, in fact, going to be playing support, and he got that first blood, which is always nice to have. Like, no one's going to disagree with that, but it's so much better to have it on a Clockwork than almost any other hero, because Boots first on a Clockwork versus a Centaur is disgustingly good. 
Like, Battery Assault is already going to be doing... I think it does, like, 300-ish damage if it's just on one target at uh, level 1, so that's ridiculous. But uh, also, with the boots, there's no way that Moon will be able to outrun Yergity now. At least, he had boots to start out with, but now Yergity will be able to keep up. Yeah, 365 move speed on a Clockwork. Pretty darn fast hero. As far as our mid lane is concerned, Storm versus Razor. Razor should be doing a little bit better in this lane. Storm going to be spamming out those first couple remnants to ensure that he gets his bottle gold or at least close to it. DVG not having a fun time up in the top lane on this Bristleback. Currently just being zoned by the Disruptor, forcing out the salve already. And that's pretty unavoidable for the Bristleback, but he'll be able to stack up if he really needs to. Clear out Ancients or Hard Camps or anything like that, whereas Centaur can't really do the same. So the offlaners are having about equally tough times, and over towards mid, Reed is doing pretty well versus Noble Wings, forcing him back really far, even though he doesn't have any sort of substantial stat items, no Wraith Band or anything like that to help him out. Grabbing boots first up against a inherently slower hero like Storm Spirit will mean that until Storm Spirit gets to that level 6 mark, Reed will be able to charge at him, static link him, and pretty much just sit on the high ground, or sit in between the Creep Wave and the Storm Spirit. And then, in that case, Noble Wings gets nothing. Noble Link's going to be forced to send a salve out to himself, but is it coming fast enough? Disruptor coming in from the top, and he has an Invis rune, so Storm Spirit shouldn't get caught out here. He has his salve running, and Disruptor not going to cancel it, but the plasma field is. Now the kinetic field map going to be off the mark. For now, he's going to survive. They just need a little bit more damage. They will be able to find it. This is going to be a pretty easy kill for Quetzal in mid. Missed helping out just a little bit. You never really expect the ganking disruptor, and to be fair, he didn't really do that much except for a little bit of damage from Thunderstrike, but Reed with level 2 static link, and as a Storm Spirit, there's not much you could do. He does not have boots, and the Razor does, and that differential in and of itself is going to mean that the Razor is sitting pretty over in this mid lane. Noble Wings needs to get boots at the very least, but uh, he ha really, really wants his bottle just a little bit more. Yeah, we'll have to see how that pays off for him. For now, bottom lane is going really well for next level badasses, and well, the status quo is pretty similar on both sides. The safe lanes are trading farm, and even though the storm has died, it's still able to CS decently up against the Razor. Yeah, in between the static links, he's going to be A-OK, -okay, but once he's linked up, it's all over. Bottom lane, Moon is in a little bit of trouble. He has a stomp opportunity right now. Batter Salt is there on only one target. He's going to get chased down by a Spirit of Necropos. Looks like that won't be lethal. Here comes Forever from the back. Has just hit level 2. He has a Hex now, but he doesn't have enough mana because of the cog. Distant body dropping pretty low, but he will get the kill on the Lion. Moon can do nothing but watch. Witch Doctor also off to the side, but Necropos being focused down by the tower going to give Moon quite a chunk of experience, and Witch Doctor forced to TP out. They get the kill on the Lion, but that was a really expensive kill, even though no one actually killed off the Necrophos. Yeah, I really don't think that's worth it. Yorgadi is the one to get the kill, and it's always nice to have some extra experience on your support clocks. But yeah, not worth trading your safe lane farming Necrophos and giving Center that extra bit of space. Razor in mid, drops low, looks like he tanked a tower shot as well as a hit from Storm. And he stole a lot of damage. Noble Wings isn't really doing too much, but his static link, or uh, rather overload damage, is still doing quite a bit. Not enough, though. One more hit is all he needs. Greed doesn't really want to run into these remnants, though. That's a great way to die. Is there a glimpse on Mist? He's out of range. It's only level 1. And Greed is very low. No wings, though, with that bottle, is getting quite an edge right now. And now that he has some base damage, he'll be glimpsed nowhere. The field of Greed looks like it will not kill off Noble Wings, but with Hex coming in from forever, they will get the kill in the end. Nergity now going to teleport right into a trap. A couple of creep hits, but it's outside of that. It looks like he will be fine. Greed getting it bottle up right now, and Nergity will slip away. Storm Spirit, though, going to take his second casualty of the game. Storm Spirit wanted so much to kill that Razor, but ends up paying the price for it. Just not a situation that you can actually make the most out of without level 6 on the Storm. Uh, probably not the case. He's going to be not level 6 for a while yet, just now taking level 5. And the beauty of Quetzal's draft is that these two supports are able to roam around quite heavily and leave the Clinks up on the top lane by himself. They're just the Clinks versus any one matchup is usually pretty good for the Clinks, and the Bristleback is no exception here. Uh, Raykill doesn't have a magic stick, but uh, he doesn't really need it right now because he is going to be testing a vast last hit advantage over the Bristleback just as far as damage output is concerned. And his free chip damage, no aggro drawn from the Searing Arrows, is pretty damn good as well. So the supports from Quetzal, they're freed up to do whatever they want. And what they want includes helping out the mid lane Razor.
Yeah. Yorgity rotates in as well with Battery Assault and Cogs at the ready, but can't actually find anything. 42 damage stolen. Greed. Going to be trading blows maybe a little bit too aggressively, but he'll be fine, especially with Forever backing him up. They'll X up Yorgity. Can't actually pursue that, though. Yeah, so it, no one is on the bottom lane right now for Ketzel, and that could be a little bit problematic, but Moon is you know, pushing level 5 right now. DVG is already there, and only having to deal with one hero, it's a little bit easier for him to function in this game, but uh, still the Centaur is more or less on track with where you can expect your centaur to be, especially with no help at all from his allies. Lion Disruptor not paying this bottom lane any heed, which may be a mistake, but Lion Disruptor can't really do too much to kill off the likes of Necrophos Witch Doctor. There's way too much healing there, and the Disruptor's only level 3. If they had a Static Storm and or a Finger of Death, yeah, it's an easy kill, but that's not going to come up for quite a long time. Yeah. The supports, after spending a decent time in mid, are going to eventually show their faces up towards top, but there's no Bristleback to be found. He's completely zoned out by the clinks, and it looks like they'll just make some stacks. They really need a little bit more experience, these supports. The Witch Doctor's level 4, pushing level 5. Moon is taking a little bit of damage, but he will be fine. And also Yurgity, he's level 4, almost pushing level 5 as well. So the supports, they've been roaming around decently, but uh, they helped out a couple times, not really gave themselves a huge advantage through that. They need to either get a lot more kills or start stacking up and pulling and stuff like that. If they don't do that, then low-level Disruptor, low-level Lion, really not nothing to be too afraid of if your next level badass is Greed, is going to actually get a TP support as Yurgity is getting hit with a spike. Hex is there as well as a glimpse. And with Greed stealing that damage, he'll get one kill. Stampede is there as well. No Wings has a ball ending out. He will get pretty far away. Back up to the high ground, in fact and he will survive, but the support came in once again for Quetzal, and now their support team get a little bit more experience because of it. Raykill playing very aggressively up towards top is going to take five cool stacks, but in the end he's the one with the salve, and he can stick around a lot longer than that Bristleback. Probably will pop that after this creep wave. Yeah, he's just going to be sitting pretty up towards top. Has the pact for a little bit of health and damage, and the salve as well, so uh, this clinks. I don't know if he wants to be rushing an Orchid in this game. It's pretty good against Storm Spirit. But uh, whatever build he wants to go for, he will be on his way to it. He's already holding on to 1400. And DVG is standing still. Oh man, you never stand still in Dota, ever. That gets you killed. They also kill off a Storm Spirit at the exact same time. Moon gets the kill. Was that a solo kill on the Storm Spirit? That's just not supposed to happen. It's two free kills for Quetzal. And those are two really bad heroes for next level badasses to lose. Yeah, definitely. So Moon with that maxed out double edge Storm, not particularly high as far as stats are concerned, even with Null Tally and two branches, just doesn't help you, I suppose. I did not think that Centaur would get a solo kill in a million years on a Storm Spirit, but apparently he just went a little too aggressively for that rune. Maybe he was out of mana, who knows. And a little bit of extra cash for the Centaur is going to bring him a little bit closer to the Blink Dagger. Still is a decent, uh, decently far away, but... I think Raykill getting that solo kill is a little bit more influential. Like, Bristleback was not getting that much farm, but he's getting a lot of experience. But still, the Clinks will be able to harass mostly anyone out of lane. But as far as killing the hero by himself, Clinks can't really do it unless you make the crucial mistake of standing still. And now DVG is going to know about that, but now he's also going to have to deal with the Disruptor and Lion. And the Disruptor is going to run into right away. They have a level 2 glimpse, but they won't pull it. Yeah, they'll. Little... Hold on to that trigger for now both of these supports, just desperately needing a little bit more time. Level 4 on both of them still. But either way, the Clinks is going to be A-OK. -okay. Greed, he's going to be going for a mech for his team. Not really uh, doing the best versus the Storm Spirit, but three deaths on the Storm can make this lane a lot easier for the Razor. And this Embody, he's been farming up this entire time. His mech is already completed. And Necrophos is going to have quite a bit of free time in this game since Quetzal kind of playing like they forgot they had a bottom lane. They haven't touched that in the entire time. Yeah. That said, I still think it's okay, since their Clinks is just getting so much out of top. More CS than the Necrophos, as well as getting a free kill, definitely doesn't hurt. The tier 1 tower in bottom is going to end up falling, however. Yeah, it's just going to be a matter of time. Moon, he's going to get quite a bit of experience. He's already level 8 right now. They could very easily make a defense here, Quetzal, if they actually wanted to move heroes down here, but... Uh, it seems like the heroes are satisfied with getting farm in lane, and it's a call that you just have to make sometimes. Do we get this guaranteed farm since no one's in our lane, or do we actually defend and try to look for kills? And it looks like for Ray kill, the option's going to be, I'm going to leave and go ahead and look for something to kill. And down towards bottom, they have no detection. They don't know that there's a clinks here. 
You know, there's a Centaur, and they probably know that someone else is here as well. There's a Kinetic Field, Disembody getting it walled off because of it. Stampeding forward. Stomp not going to connect, but they glimpse back Disembody. Hex him up as well. Cask still bouncing through as DVG comes in, but a three-man hoof stomp. Boom's going to lock them all down. Raykill is firing off in the back end, but it's missed. Take most of the damage. Disembody gets to live. Raykill also dropping fairly low. Here comes Greed from the side. He is not going to do much of anything, though. It's just Ketzel losing one hero as the Necrophos with that mech and level 4 pulse slips away. And that's not how that was supposed to go for Ketzel. DVG still chasing forward for a little bit more. Moon is right around the corner. Hoof Stomp uh, is not going to be used just yet. Now he's going to get cast. Moon is in a little bit of trouble. He will unleash the Hoof Stomp. Uh, Plaza Field as well. Going to kill off the Witch Doctor. Now onto DVG. The Razor is going to focus. But it won't quite be enough. Wrapping around the side. Yurgity is looking for a kill on someone. He's going to be running out of mana very quickly though. And he's going to run into a Razor with 126 stolen damage. Yurgity in the wrong place at the wrong time, man. Don't want to be there, but here comes Noble Wings. Clean up for the Storm Spirit, maybe. And try to go for Greed and then decide to run away. No more skills available for Quetzal, but Noble Wings still messing around. We'll kill off Greed. Now we'll kill off Forever. Just needs a couple more right clicks. That's going to be a double. Now he's going to man fight Mist. Where is the Centaur? He's coming back, but it's a little bit too slow. Ray Kill also from the side is going to come in. Noble Wings going to jump right into a Hoof Stomp, and a double edge will do him in. 2 HP, the Centaur lives because of that double edge, but Storm Spirit definitely playing a little bit too out of control should have just made the responsible decision fall back we have a rocket flare flying in and centaur centaur that was actually pretty close yeah that was a pretty slick uh blackwork rocket but just uh doesn't count it doesn't end up pretty tier one tower eventually does fall in the bottom lane in the end it starts out pretty bad for quetzal but the turnaround probably makes up for it especially considering they get that storm spirit kill after the fact it's is or it is going to be a straight orchid for the clinks and he's going to have it very quickly he buys the recipe and is probably going to have that in the next three minutes or so unfortunately they just couldn't kill off the necrophos in the bottom lane who's getting even tankier now with strength threads up and I'm pretty sure there's going to be some sort of survivability item on him for his next upcoming items, whether it's Yules, Orchid, Bloodstone, Agadims, all of them will give him quite a bit in the ways of survivability. So if you can't focus down on Necrophos with everyone on the team, I guess everyone minus Razor focusing down on him, then what do you have to do to actually kill him off? Miss also going to be wrapped around Yurgity, prepping the battery assault already, will get glimpsed back. Hookshot is available, but he can't quite find an angle. Uh, unless he will find an angle, sees him, hook shot in, gonna connect onto Miss. Lion caught sleeping, can't quite help out his disruptor friend, but now he's gonna jump into action, level 3 spike, plus hex available, but the heck, the uh, haste is still active, you're gonna, going to run out of haste though, still a little bit of trouble as he's going to run into the razor it looks like, Yurgity, is he just dead here, it looks like he has no way of getting out of this. Straight into a Razor, he's going to run. I think the only way out is death by golems. Not gonna happen. Razor is going to get that kill, and Greed mops up a pretty free run. A little bit of uh, aggressive play from the Clockwork. The second time, actually, he's been uh, a little bit too aggressive over in this bottom lane. So maybe he's got to just calm down just a little bit and remember that he actually didn't get that much experience. He's still a support. Noble Wings in the meantime, he's running away from Greed. He's gonna ball lightning all the way up there. Wait, but now that he's up here, where does he go? Why did he go up here and not down? He's going to buy out, so he doesn't lose anything, but still. That must have been a misclick, right? I would think so. <laughs> like, especially I don't have with another the, that... explanation. Don't click minimap, kids. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I guess that explains everything. <laughs> it's a good lesson. Don't click your minimap. Because you, if you're going to burn that much mana to escape, you don't go towards the enemy. You go away no. from them. I mean, maybe if you have a TP and you're fast on your fingers, you can TP while you're zipping away, and then you'll be fine, but yeah, not the case. Clockwork's up top, and he has a hookshot primed and ready to go, but Clink's not the easiest of kills. He does have dust, however, so it is possible. Oh, they're also going to run into someone on the bottom lane. Mist can take quite a bit of damage. Cast bouncing through Moon. Can't quite get in there with a blink. Mist will die to the Death Ward plus Maledict combo, even though it is only level 1. Stampede, though, they want to go back in. Disembody we will get hit with that Hoof Stomp. Hexed up as well. Can't get any pulses or mech off. Necrophos down, and that's a trade for Quetzal that they are going to be more than happy to take, especially if they kill off a couple of wards as well, and they will do so. And that is pretty much best case scenario. Hex into Razor damage. Still pretty substantial at this point, especially with Moon packing that Blink Dagger. Yeah. That Earth Spike was really close to cancelling McCoy's racist grandpa's TP as well. Um, either way, Deepine Enemy Lines. Um, no, nobody's Deepine Enemy Lines. I'm oh, really mid. confused. Either way, they're going to mid. open up onto the Storm Spirit with the Orchid. Now Noble Wings is going to die. If nothing else, the Soul Burn will do him in. 
and it will do so as Clinks finds himself the kill. First usage of Orchid, first kill on the enemy Storm Spirit, and that is probably to be expected. That's going to be Clinks' mission, actually, for the most part in this game. Get kills on anyone, but especially get kills on that Storm Spirit. And Storm Spirit's lagging a little bit behind as far as his Orchid is coming as well. So Raykill will have a long time where he's going to be able to hunt the Storm Spirit, and Storm Spirit can't really hunt for him. So this is going to be a game where Clinks is probably going to be pretty well off. 2 0 1, 100 CS at this point in the game, and leading the net worth chart. Well, clearly he's doing well, but this is a hero that can snowball very quickly and do so extremely well if he gets just a little bit of start. Yeah. And we'll have to see if that's going to work out for him. He definitely has the. Um... Close to, if not the ideal start for a Klinks. Well, for now, nothing else is immediately happening on top of this map. Although next level badasses have the ability to jump, it's going to be Ray Kill that goes for Noble Wings. Although this is a bait, they have a clockwork behind them. The hookshot is going to connect. They don't have much turn around. The glimpse back. Yurgeny's going to die before the glimpse. The Death War is going to be channeled, and Ray Kill's dropping low, but the static storm going to cancel that one. Ray Kill gets the double before ending up falling. Gives the Witch Doctor a lot of experience, but in the end, I think that's okay for Quetzal. Yeah, they got a lot more than they really should have, and that Disruptor ultimate coming through huge there for the Quetzal side. Also, the Klinks' damage absolutely insane versus the kind of fragile Clockwork. Moon is being stalked right now by two heroes. He doesn't know that he's in between these two heroes, but at the same time, next level badasses don't want to jump on a Centaur when they know that his allies are just right around the corner. So they will end up TPing someone in the Clockwork. Just respond. He's going to close in. DVG also coming around from the side. Stampede to disengage. Can they escape with everyone? It looks like they might be in the clear. They don't have a hook shot on this clockwork, so it looks like Quetzal will get out of that sticky situation. Ultimately, not much loss except for a cooldown, and that cooldown will be back soon enough. Yep, well, that's it. Klinks is back up and online. Disruptor going to get killed off by the storm up towards top. The glimpse is not going to save anything. In fact, probably help the storm more than anything. Noble Wings back under his tower. That's the dream, right? You get a free kill, get a free taxi ride out, and... He's still in a little bit of trouble. If he gets silenced, then the hoof stomp, I'm sure, will come in. Although Moon, 10 mana short of that, so it looks like he was never in any real trouble. But it's Noble Wings uh, still getting a couple of kills here and there. Is still pretty decently far away from his own Orchid. But hey, he's uh, having some time to recover. He is 3 7 and 2 after all, so can't really expect a Storm Spirit with an amazingly fast Orchid in this game. No, definitely not. Bottom lane's getting pushed out by next level badasses. For now, Quetzal aren't really in any position to defend, and things could go very south if anybody bumps into Yurgedy, currently in this on the clock. Well, he's looking for someone. Greed is not the hero that he wants to hookshot into. Disruptor, a little bit more so, but even then, he could use Static Storm and Man Fight or Glimpse and hope that that's enough. Either way, Yurgedy is going to back off. Tower taking a little bit of damage, but nothing that they're going to worry about too much, because over in the top lane in the meantime, Ray kill, just using that searing arrow balance is going to kill off that tower very quickly, although Disembody going to put a stop to that. I don't think they could absolutely stop Ray kill from taking this tower if he really wants it. Zipoy in mid, not going to save the poor Witch Doctor, however, he's, as he gets destroyed. Glimpse is just going to send Storm Spirit like two inches towards his high ground. Doesn't really do anything. And, uh, well, it's just going to be a clean pick up for Ketzel. Yeah, so a pick's a pick, and uh, Witch Doctor is still going to be really sad. Raykill is on the hunt right now. He's going to run through the Storm Spirit into DVG. Kind of unfortunate for Raykill, but fortunately for Raykill, he actually can steal one of his creeps and then go to town with the Soul Burn. DVG on the way out. He will not die to this. Storm Spirit going to come right in, do a lot of damage to Raykill, but it's only level one pull. Here comes the Centaur, plus the Lion. DVG going to take a fall, plus the stun to Noble Wings. That's going to be two. Here comes Yurgedy. Before he realizes that he's all alone, he shouldn't really be there, he will go down. And no one else next level badasses are in the area, so Quetzal reinforced a lot more heroes a lot faster, and they end up taking three free kills. 19-8, the start is looking eerily similar to what we saw in game number one. Hopefully it doesn't end that way, at least for Quetzal's sake. Tier 1 tower in mid should be falling very quickly, but they're going to try and defend top, where Disembody's been sitting. Where's their jump? Do they actually have a way to catch him out? It doesn't look like it. Disembody will be able to just walk away. Uh, the mid lane tower is still not in deny range right now, and Quetzal, pretty sure they have enough power without a BKB on the Razor to just brute force this tower if they really want to. Otherwise, just back off and take it later. It's still going to be there next time you really want to go for it. So Quetzal still pretty much where they want to be at this point. Maybe not as much pushing as they really want, 
Seeing as though all three tier three towers are are tier one towers rather are still up for next level badasses, but still they're getting a hell of a lot of farm, and that farm is being focused into a Razor and a Clinks, and those are some pretty deadly heroes. Yeah, definitely. So Clinks currently sitting on a missile hammer probably should be a BKB for him, but even if he goes for a Desolator, Raykill's still going to be incredibly scary. Next level badasses, they're intent at defending all these tier one towers. Eventually, they're going to lose something as Raykill is once again on the prowl. Razor Illusion, trying to bait someone. I don't think it's going to work. Uh, yeah, you don't stay here as a Razor, so he's actually going to rotate in with another Illusion, trying to make that one work, but Noble Wings, he might get jumped upon. Moon has an angle, jump in, boost Tom stack door as well. Noble Wings down in an instant. The Death Ward is going to be channeled from the back end, though McCoy is going to get almost a complete full channel before he gets interrupted. It'll be a one for one overall. Groot the BKB is dealing a lot of damage out from DBG, but he's still doing a lot of damage to miss, even regardless of that damage differential. Greed will get killed off by the the Scythe, and Moon has just got to run. That's going to be a three for one in favor of Nexel of Badasses. The Storm Spirit lived for a lot longer than I really thought, but in the meantime, they lose a tier one tower mid, and Ray Kill brings a tier two down to half HP. Yeah, by no means does that make it a win for Quetzal. That team fight itself was still really good for next level badasses, but at the very least they don't lose everything. And it is, in fact, going to be a Desolator of Clinks. Yes, I complete it now. Okay, so now the Bristle Pack, though very tanky, is far from invulnerable versus this Clinks. But yeah, for Quetzal, that was, I think, the first usage of the Scythe and connecting on the hero that you want it to connect on in that Razor. Level 2 Scythe is pretty easy to get lethal damage with, and now the Razor's going to be down for another insane 40 seconds. So, Kessel may be investing a little bit too much to kill off the Storm Spirit. Yeah, he's very difficult to kill, but he's not really worth killing with all of those tools. Like, he does, doesn't actually have any substantial threat except for his base uh, stats. Yeah, well, for now, things have sold out a little bit. Bristleback is going to be working towards the same build that we saw last game. Sanj is going to be the next order of business for him. As Ketzel just kind of wait for the rest of their team to be back up, except for Raykill. He's looking for a Storm Spirit. He might just be able to find him. Inside the duration oh. of a strafe, he can kill him. But oh, they walked into a sentry. They have another one. They're going to dust him up, pull him back. This time with level 2 pull, it's going to be plenty to kill off that cling. Yeah, with Clinks, it's pretty much just a matter of time before that happens. And once it happens once, it's generally going to not happen again for quite a long time. But still, Quetzal having sentries at the right place, being in the right place at the right time, with the right heroes, with Dust as well. So Clinks is going to get blindsided, and that's going to be his second death. But uh, yeah, it's it was probably going to happen at one point in this game. And it's better to happen now than when your Clinks is you know six-slotted and an essential part of your defense. Yeah, right now he's going to be back up in 20 seconds, and outside of the golden experience they gave away to the enemy team, which is significant, he actually didn't spend anything for that. We have a four staff now for the Witch Doctor, which is going to help somewhat up against the Clinks, but really you kind of need a Ghost Scepter, and then again, if you build Ghost, you have a Lion on the enemy team and a Centaur as well. Well, mid lane Greed laying himself out as bait right now. Let's see if next level Battises are going to bite. It looks like they really don't want to. <laughs> you don't have any reason to go for a Razor with a mech and a BKB. Seems like a bad idea. Uh, going for a Disruptor though, that's a little bit more appealing. And Yurgidi is in a position right now where he could hook, can hook shot and isolate one target. But no, Quetzal, they're going to back off. I don't think Quetzal are really going to be looking for a full 5-on-5 five five heads-up engagement. They should be playing a more run-and-gun style with the Clinks and the Razor. Yep, we'll have to see if they're going to be able to accomplish that. Raykill is back up and eventually he's going to start hunting, but right now in LBA, just aren't giving him that opening. Both teams have pretty much done the same exact thing in mid, just taking turns, leaving that one hero up in front. <laughs> it looks like no one's going to be biting on that bait. Raykill is going to snag a tower up towards top. That tower was doomed to fall eventually, and it was going to die to the clinks at one point in time, so much like the clinks' death, it was inevitable. Desolator does help you quite a bit in killing off these towers, and well, he's doing, you know, more than 200 a pop, not to mention Searing Arrows, not to mention Armor Differential, not to mention Orchid, so this Clinks is dishing. That being said, Quetzal, you probably don't want to fight without the Clinks. You're going to get someone Clinks back. This is body going to blink clean out of there, though. Static Storm is there as well, yet they're still chasing forward for this. Noble Wings has a free pass out. Greed, though, going to get hookshot in. Cog's trapped as well. I think there's a Scythe awaiting him. Yurgi is going to man tight out and will die. Greed with a lot of damage still is dishing. And that was a 4v5 engagement for Quetzal, where they completely missed their initiation. 
But it still worked out pretty well because Jurgity is so very fragile. And off of that, they're going to go for Roshan. Yeah, and they should be able to take it. It is going into a Roshan with a Storm Spirit on the enemy team. But I think they take it more than fast enough. Just look at how much damage Free Kill is doing. Centaur, though, up to the high ground. He is going to use all of his mobility in order to kill off that ward. This is kind of a fightable fight for next level badasses, but they have to go very, very soon. Uh, there's a mech up in 7 seconds. Storm Spirit going to get into a good position to see everything, but now he's going to get blinked at Hexapon. Forever has that blink. This just in. That's going to kill off the Storm Spirit, and now they're looking for more. They probably won't find anyone, but they get a free Aegis and a free Storm Spirit. Doesn't get much better than that. Lion is going to get down just fine, so... Ketzel, now with the clinks with the team, are going to go for this Tier 1 and probably go for a Tier 2 afterwards. Yeah, Tier 1 should not be long for this world. Clinks could backdoor that by himself easily enough, and with his team, it's only going to be a matter of seconds. And then Tier 2, I think it's going to suffer a similar fade. Clinks is hard enough to bring down the first life, even without having the death backed up. He's sitting at a respectable amount of HP, currently at 1600. Yeah, that's kind of weird to see, given that Desolator gives you nothing but damage. Orchid pretty much gives you nothing but damage. And it's just an Ogre Club and Agi Tread. Yet he's still decently tanky, so... Uh, Lynx is still a relatively easy hero to kill, but not as uh, not as easy as it would really seem. So, Tier 1 Tower is going to go down, and next level badasses, their split push is going to force a couple Ketzel heroes back. But whoever's going to teleport down to this bottom lane is going to be in for a world of hurt. Storm Spirit has his Orchid, all he wants to do is use it, but all of a sudden, there's literally a million heroes, and he's dead before the Hoof Stomp can even land. Reshot by Ray Kill. that's an absurd amount of damage, and we can see it on the tower, look at that. That should not be happening, 27 minutes in the game, Ray Kill's going to mop up that tier 2 in just a couple of shots. That's your BKB completed up for Ray Kill, as if he wasn't hard enough to kill already. His death pack is going to wear off now, so at least for the time being, they're going to back, but why not go down for the mid lane? Yeah, they still have the Aegis. They clearly have enough damage to take these towers if the Klinks is just allowed to fire off a couple of shots. And Quetzal, they have all of their other skills available. Razor, not with the most mana, but yeah, that's what the Fountain is for. He's going to regen back up to full. And it looks like Quetzal are prepared to go for a little bit more pushing. They should just be pushing as much as they can with this Aegis. Really, there's no reason not to do it. Like, their initiation, the initiation that they have to fear would be in the hands of the Clockwork and the Storm. But whenever Clockwork hookshots in, he dies. And Storm is 3.11 and 3, so he's dying a lot as well. So, Quetzal, they don't have anything to fear about just going in for a straight push, especially if they pick off someone beforehand. Unfortunately, the Shuffter is going to be spotted out, but this might end up being bait, because, yeah, the Witch Doctor can get forced out to the high ground. Instantly, he's going to get silenced and brought down literally two-shot by Ray Kill. I don't really know what the plan was there for Witch Doctor. You don't want to force staff yourself up a high ground like that without vision. Yeah, really awkward jump, and now Ketzel might just go high ground at this point. Ray Kill did use Strafe there, and he has a fresh death pack up. Though get one glimpse back, it's gonna be the storm into the static storm. He's orchid it up and dropped down very quickly. You're gonna go and suffer a similar fate. Now DBG also have stopped up, double edge to the face, and Ray Kill doesn't care that he's hitting from behind, he still rips him apart. The Necrophos is the only one surviving, he's being zoned out to the well and might just die, disembody. Dropped incredibly low by Greed, but the Tier 3 tower is also going to fall. Bristleback buys back, but what can he actually accomplish? The melee barracks is as good as dead. In a couple of seconds, Moon will have his Blink Dagger back up, and if DBG gets stunned once, then the Lion is bound to follow up. And, well, that's going to be one Rax taken. Forever going to Blink forward, however, Disembodied will Blink around that. Moon going to survive the uh, Scythe, and, well, we have a Death Ward being channeled, but Ray Kill is going to tank all of that. We'll lose his Aegis. Who cares? DVG is now going to get hexed up, taking quite a bit of damage. Greed with that stack link, all that's a plus 200. DVG has his back turn, but uh, it looks like it won't be enough to Ray Kill's damage. Disembody going to try to chase for the Centaur. He's not going to get that kill. He might get a kill on Greed, but Mech and TP out. Greed going to get bailed out by Moon Hookshot, though. Going to kill out the Centaur at the end. Jurgity is going to get Glimpse back, very luckily for him. That Glimpse saved his life because Raykill would have killed him otherwise. Noble Wing is going to arrive to this fight. Gets trapped in a kinetic field, but Raykill still taking a lot of damage. Can't quite get enough arrow shots in. Noble Wings, though, running out of mana. And Mist might have a chance to survive. TP out. That's going to end up killing him off. One more right click, and that's going to be a complete team wipe in favor of next level badasses. I feel like I've seen this before. Kettle taking Raxes, but losing a team fight straight after. But I'm pretty sure this time it's going to be a lot different because it's so easy for them to push. Yeah, I... Kind of want to play Devil's Advocate and see what NLBA could do to actually win this game, but... Uh, 
I don't know, just if you look at the speed that Clinks takes those barracks, even if they throw bodies at those racks, they will get them. And, I don't know, at that situation, I'm not sure if it's really worth it. He wasn't able to get the BKB off up against the Storm for... Oh, or was he? Maybe that's off of cooldown. Yeah, I think it was probably on cooldown by the time he was fighting the Storm Spirit, but I didn't get a good look at that either. But, I mean, next level badasses, they were kind of in a bad position in game number one, and they turned it around. If they get a couple of pickoffs with the hook shot, with the ball lightning, with the scythe especially, it's not inconceivable to see them come back from this game. I mean, this is, again, what happened last game. Well, they're going to smoke up and look for a pickoff, and we'll have to see if they're going to be able to connect. Yurgidi is leading the charge, and they have the Storm Spirit at the ready, and pretty much everybody is close by if they can actually find somebody to stick on. Ray kill is a kill that they'd love to find, and maybe it's a kill they're going to get. They zip in, but he pops the BKB now turns on to the Storm Spirit. Ghost Zipper's going to save the Necropus, but over the sideline, Static Storm will kill off Noble Wings. Now you're going to be in a whole heap of trouble, though Death Ward is being challenged, killing off the Disruptor, but not enough to kill him outright. DVG isn't sticking under the targets, trying to cool spray them down, but can't do it. They're stunning up Moon. They deny the regeneration rune away from him. Ray kill is going to start opening up a new Yurgidi. Yurgidi's down, and now they just need to run. They are going to be able to size up Ray kill, try to kill off, and they will be able to do so, but at the cost of the Necrophos' life. DBG is getting a lot of armor drained away from him, but now is going to start turning and fighting against these supports forever as well as poor Mist are just dropping so low. They only need a little bit more damage, and they're going to find it with one more Quills, and well, that's going to be proc. Double kill for DBG, and now he turns his face to the Razor and dies. It's an absolute bloodpath, and somehow Kits will make it out on top. Man, this is the Razor of old, man. Like, this is the type of Razor that teams pick up Razor for, where he just drains out a million damage, is damn hard to kill because of his uh, health pool and his mech and his BKB. Then he just goes to town on everyone. But uh, what really saved that fight right there, I think, was the glimpse of the Disruptor onto that Witch Doctor, interrupting that Death Ward channeling, and then he just tried to back off, but... And Flinks ended up going down, which is usually a pretty good signal for next level badasses, but just not enough to kill off everyone. You have a certain amount of damage you get output, and Centaur received none of that. And at a certain point, Centaur is going to make you pay for ignoring him, because Double Edge does have a reasonable cooldown and does do quite a bit of damage. And now it's going to be quite a bit harder to actually kill off these heroes. We have a pipe up for the Centaur. And a lot of the damage coming out from NLBA is magical, outside of the Bristleback and the Death Ward, that is. Yeah, so that's going to be a pretty useful tool for the Quetzal side. And so we have an Aghanim Scepter up on the Necrophos. That's one of the key tools in them being able to come back into this game. Scythe, unfortunately, missed the kill on the Clinks. I think it just did damage. Uh, nowhere near that increased uh, respawn timer. So a little bit unfortunate there for the Necrophos. But next time if he lands this Scythe for a kill on the Clinks, that can be a huge asset. It'll, he'll be down for like 110 seconds or something like that. 100 seconds at the very least and won't be able to buy back, and without the Clinks, Quetzal, they're going to potentially run low on damage output. Like, the Razor does do a decent amount, but he needs time to do that damage output. Yeah. Clinks is really the one that's doing the quick and sustained damage. Smoke again from NLBA. Didn't work out the first time, but we'll have to see how it pans out the second. DVG is going to be the one leading the charge, and, well, they might just be bumping into the full five-man unit of Quetzal, or they could just find the solo center. Right now, no vision has actually been garnered by them outside of this high ground ward, and they haven't found an opening. The flare is going to scout things out, but they don't see anybody yet. Well, Noble Wings still leading the way, wrapping around for the Razor. But if they do actually run into this, then Quetzal are in a perfect position. They have two supports with blink daggers right across the trees, and they're hidden. Ray Kill is invisible. And Moon is going to be the one they run into. This is potentially a really bad position for Quetzal to fight in. And now next level Battles have a fight on their hands. Jump forward for a Static Storm. Unfortunately, not going to catch anyone. But Yurgidi gets separated from the rest of his team. There is a Death Ward being channeled. But McCoy is going to take a lot of damage and be punished. Killed off and immediately. Reed and Ray kill just standing strong. Just right-clicking on everyone. No Wings will off the line in the process. But it will be once again for an even trade. DVG this time won't be able to survive. Ray kill gets Scythe in the face. 110 seconds down. But now Disembodied all alone. He's basically fighting up against a Razor. With 224 stolen damage, that's a rampage for Greed. You can't focus the Razor down, and if you can't, then he will kill you off. A huge win for Quetzal. I think I've seen that fight before. Again, Greed just absolutely going to town to the enemy side, and next level Badass is losing a lot of momentum, even though they are down their clinks for 80 seconds. The Razor himself is 
a pushing threat, and he's going to have the Refresh Orb flying out to him any second now. Buybacks galore on three heroes. He'll be able to kill off Greed and should be able to kill off Moon too, but is it worth it? Let's see. Moon trying to buy as much distance as he can. The Orchid's going to wear off. He does not have a Stampede for five seconds. Can he get the Blink out? No. Going to be a double kill for Yurgedy, but they need to get something immediately off of this. And it looks like mid lane is probably going to be the easiest. Roshan is alive, but Roshan is also very far away, so... It costed them three buybacks for two kills. I'm pretty sure the math there isn't worth it, and if it is, it's just very narrowly so. But, uh, yeah, if they can't get any objectives, then that's really troubling, because Quetzal, they are going to be aware that the Roshan is going to be attempted by next level badasses, but Nightwing, uh, Noble Wings, Yergity, and Disembody, they can't easily kill off a Roshan. They just don't have the damage output, nor do they really have the tank ability, so... They may want to go for this, but I don't think this is going to work out. Actually, no, DVG is coming in. It's possible for them to do it now. Buyback from the Centaur, and they're looking to contest this, Quetzal. If they botch this fight, however, that could be a very, very bad play for them. But they'll double buyback just to defend the Roshan. And if, as long as they don't die, then they'll be A-OK. -okay. They do have the refresher up for the Razor. After that Rampage, even after buying back, still sitting at a large chunk of net worth. And now they have the Lincolns up for Clinks too. Getting those side kills onto the Clinks just got a whole lot harder through BKB. The only way that they can actually pop that is the Reaper's Scythe. Oh man, that's going to be really rough and you don't really want to... I mean, you kind of do want to sight the Clinks, but it's so risky just throwing it on him because Lincoln's here will just block it, so... Bottom lane is still pushing in for Quetzal, and because of that lane advantage, they're going to actually get a little bit of damage stolen by the Storm Spirit Illusion. That's actually really bad for next level badasses, because now you have a Razor with doing plus on 68, and the Roshan's right around the corner. I don't really think it matters too much, but it'll help them clear it that much faster. Yeah, I mean, it's really doesn't mean anything long zip in he's going for the steal but it's gonna lose his life first age is picked up by the clinks and uh that really yeah. went to garbage bat or very quickly for next level badasses not exactly what you want to be doing trying to make the baller play but fell just a little bit short they're gonna stampede charging forward for disembody they have another blink dagger in three seconds and necrophos does not have his for another second seven they're going to get the Hex off. They're going to get the Stomp off. Damage Drain is going to commence as well. Disembody has no backup incoming. He will take a fall eventually. Uh, Thunderstrike? No, Double Edge will get the kill. Now with two heroes down, both of whom do not have buyback, Ketzel are looking for a secondary set of racks right now. And seeing as though top lane tier 2 is still alive, clearly you got to go for mid. Yeah, and I don't see next level badasses defending this. The Clockwork Witch Starter and the Bristleback without the other two heroes? They might be able to delay, but not when they end up dying. Yurgedy is going to barely survive the Sober. No! That did enough damage. Holy cow. Hey, I saw like 230 or something like that on the clockwork, so Sober did quite a bit. Apparently, Clinks is able to lay it in, and now with the Refresher Orb, Aghanim Scepter, they're just going to go for the jugular, wasting no time. Screw Raxes. Who needs them when you can just win the game outright? And with the minus armor they have, double Eye of the Storm taken away, plus that Desolator. Yeah, the Ancient isn't going to last long. McCoy is going to get zapped down by the Razor. DVG is going to get dove in his fountain, glimpsed out of his fountain into a hoof stomp, free dropping low, but he's still going to have enough to kill off a couple more heroes. And as I said previously, the safe money in JDL is always on a tie. And it is going to be a tie. Quetzal coming back after uh, a little bit of a disappointing game one, ending up actually sealing that one out. Even after a couple of shaky team fights, it still works out for them. The Clinks got off to an amazing start and ends up snowballing the game to victory. And really, I think the biggest player inside both of these games was Greed. Definitely impressing on his Brewmaster and Razor this game. Yeah, this, that Brewmaster had a couple moments where we were questioning his plays, but definitely turned around. And now with the 15 4 15 Razor, gotta love the symmetry there. Gotta love the play style there. Ketzel are going to pretty convincingly take game number two. And. Well, they're going to end up at a score of 7-1, I believe, and next level Bass is 3-4. So both teams doing okay here in JDL, but I think that just about wraps it up for us. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you like the casting you see here, you can follow us on Heflet TV here on Twitch and at Twitter and Facebook and all that jazz. If you want to watch these games again or any other games cast here on Heflet TV, you can find those at youtube.com slash Heflamoke. Other than that, I'm Greta V. He's been Mike Loris. And, uh, well, thanks for sticking around. We should have more games going on tomorrow, but at least for tonight, that's it.